Knit fans and welcome to this review of my weekend at Hockenheim for the final rounds of the DTM Championship and the European Formula 3 Championship. So my weekend at Hockenheim started from the 16th of October to the 18th of October and if you have told me that I would be there like two months ago I wouldn't have believed you but it's just amazing that I could have been here for the last race of the season in, in uh, Formula 3. So, I arrived at Hockenheim on Friday afternoon. Again, I couldn't be there on Friday morning because I had school and I couldn't skip it. I drove uh, my way from Paris to the track directly. I think it took something like five hours and a half. Uh, from Paris to Oppenheim, thanks to the autobahns, it was easier to get there at, on time for um, the last uh, qualifying sessions. We took part uh, really late, I think, uh, when you can see, uh, when you consider, sorry, the light. Uh, it made me think about a bit um, GP3 last week in uh, in uh, Russia, but. I won't compare the two of them together. So for this time I didn't have regular uh, tickets, I only had paddock passes and as it's the last time of the season they were used, I was able to get mine in a souvenir, so here is the paddock pass that I get in souvenir. Um, on Friday we could stay wherever we wanted on track, so we stayed on the start finish line basically um, and it was just for the qualifying session in Formula 3 so it wasn't a lot to see and um, then with the paddock passes we had places uh, on the Saxe curve which is the penultimate corner just before the stadium uh, and it's a really good place really uh, you can see a lot of overtakings and things on track basically uh, it's such a great place really and uh, it's just really next to the paddock so that's why paddock passes people could get there and uh, without a lot of problems and without losing so much time to get out of the paddock to get out on track um, it's way easier and it's way more interesting than just being in the start finish line. The problems on track really with this track is the accessibility. Like we got lost maybe a thousand times this weekend. First because none of us, none of the people who were with me uh, spoke German and I didn't speak German so it was a bit difficult to get used to everything. And um, yeah, really the accessibility is really easy. Um, even though we were staying at Mannheim, which is maybe 45 minutes away from Ockenheim by car, um, the parking places are in the city of Hockenheim and we have to walk until then. It's not a long walk basically, but I've known better uh, when you compare to Spielberg. It has nothing to see, really. Um, but otherwise, it's it's kind of cool, really. Well, Okinawa is a great track in itself. Um, but yeah, the organization is not really easy. When I think about all the events that happened in the paddock or in uh, the fan village, which was uh, close to the paddock, basically. Uh, it was near the south, the, Sud Tribune, uh, which is the start finish line. Everything about Mercedes happened to the Mercedes Tribune, which is on the other side of the track, and that was a bit weird because we wanted to go to see Nico Hülkenberg, but we couldn't see him because it was at the opposite of the track. But well, we had also good moments in the paddock, uh, especially in the F3 paddock. The other paddock is a bit of a mess, really, because in Hockenheim, nothing is uh, as um, distinguished uh, as in Spielberg, where you have the DPM access, then you have the Formula 3 access. Here, it's all the same. You have DTM, uh, you have 
a whole street of DTM and then you have DTM hospitals here's a bit of everywhere and you have a free garage is a bit of everywhere so it's not easy to to know where you are and uh, when you for example I did a lot of um, I went from Badamiswood garage to the carving garage and it's really we had to cross our way through um, tracks of Prima Power Team so it was like a bit of a mess and everything's happening. There are a lot of people uh, also, there are a lot of more people than it used to be in Schwerberg because it was the last race of the season and we were in Germany for, for DTM and German people are just like crazy about DTM and uh, well it was a bit of a mess but it was also very nice. The axis, the paddock axis on Saturday is amazing. You have a lot of things happening on Saturday. Um, we have we had the autograph session where I could get, have a lot of cards for me, as you can see there. This is Alice Mirandi, um, Charles Leclerc, for example, or Tatiana Calderon. Uh, basically all the drivers are sat and then you go from one driver to the other to make them sign either uh, a poster of all the drivers running into a three or their cards. Be careful if you don't want them to sign on posters and you want them to sign on cards or anything, bring also some paper with you because most of the drivers don't have cards with them. Uh, and I see here we have the, the cards of the Vanamous Ford people uh, because they all have all have cards. But uh, for example, for Carlin, uh, Tatiana Calderon has her own card. Uh, Carlin Millard has his own card as a rebel driver. But George Russell doesn't have the cards, so I needed him to sign. Uh, this is not a good one. Uh, to sign here, for example, at the back of Alessio Clarendi's card. Uh, same for Dorian Boccolacci, who had to see sign behind Charles Leclerc's card. So, yes, I've been a bit stupid because I had sheets of paper but I forgot them at the hotel. And that was like the day which I shouldn't have forgotten them. But the autograph station is a really nice time if you want to talk with the drivers and everything. Um, and they are just like very open to the discussion. I could take a lot of pictures of drivers and with the drivers. Um, by the way, for all the pictures uh, for Formula 3 or DTM, I have you can go on my Facebook page and this is I will put the link into the description uh, with the album of all my pictures from uh, the weekend. I took a lot of pictures with drivers during the autograph session. I took pictures with George Russell, Alessio Rolandi, Arjun Miley and Dorian Bukovacci. I stayed aside uh, for most of the, um, the autograph session with the Vanamus Ford and the Signature drivers and they are just dogs, really massive dogs. And uh, it was really good to, to be there. Um, for DTM drivers, you have more autograph sessions, but we've been to one autograph session and it was really a mess because there are all the people there and uh, with just two drivers signing and uh, really I didn't understand how it was happening. So for the autographs I got from DTM drivers, I only got them by chance really. Uh, I only had them because I was waiting in front of Adams for garage and it was just in front of the BMW uh, hospitality where they had a meet of drivers, meet the drivers and I could get autographs of Antonio Felix Acosta, of Timo Glock and Tom Lundqvist. So yeah, paddock access is really, really important on Saturdays and uh, also basically on all days, but on Saturdays is even more important as uh, Formula 3 drivers are signing and we have most of them meet the drivers with 3TM drivers. So it's really nice to see a series such open to the fans, uh, way more open than um, Formula 1 or even GP2. In GP2 you only have six drivers per week doing uh, the, the game zone. Here in F3 you have 
all the drivers. So it's uh, it's really nice to see. Here again, I will take some time to thank with all my heart Van Amersfoort for uh, their welcome, uh, for the welcoming uh, for, for us at the track, for all the things they did uh, for me for all the year at Spielberg and at Hockenheim and all through all the year. I'm so proud to say that I'm your fan. We are one team, one heart, and I will keep following you for years. Even if Charles Leclerc will not, might not stay with you, I will stay with you. And also thank uh, Charles Leclerc for his smile during all the ray, all the weekend where he has been not an easy weekend for him, but it was such welcoming and it was such a great thing for me to be there again, to meet him again, to be able to talk to him. Uh, to have him as birthday present also and uh, I want to thank all the people who did the messages uh, for the, um, the birthday present uh, it was one of my highlights of the weekend to be honest and uh, yes I'm just really looking forward to go to my next Formula 3 race uh, I don't know what it will be next year if it will be with DTM or outside DTM but uh, I'm really looking forward to this so thank you for watching, I'll see you next week for the uh, American review of the very American Grand Prix. I don't know anything about uh, the vlog for the Mexican Grand Prix as uh, the Mexican Grand Prix is just before my uh, mid-exams week. So I don't know if I'll be able to do a proper video or if I just do like I did for Monaco. So yes, I really don't know. I won't do anything for Formula E because I don't have time and um, it will be like last year. That means that I will miss maybe more than half of the races. So Formula E will have to wait for another year before I do something about it. And I think that's all I wanted to say. Like, share, subscribe, don't forget to go in the description to see all my pictures from the weekend and see you under the chicken flag. Bye.